Hello, my name is Kelly Neubauer, and I am the nurse navigator for the Heart Failure Clinic for Excella Health. I'm here to talk to you today about heart failure and some things that you can do if you know somebody or if you yourself have heart failure that can help you. So first I wanna tell you about who we are. Uh, we are a heart failure clinic that is made up of a team, myself, a clinical pharmacist named Nicole, uh, a nurse practitioner named Stacy, and a medical assistant named Scott. We, I personally see patients on the inpatient side and sometimes on the outpatient side, and I'm able to help them with education related to heart failure and help them live with this chronic disease. We're also part of this team. We are a collaborative team that focuses on helping heart failure patients live with that chronic disease. We're an extra set of eyes on the patient. We are educators and we're a transition of care coordinator. So who are we not? Um, we are not a replacement for their primary care physician and we're not a replacement for their cardiologist. We are simply a transition to help them from the hospital setting to back to normal life and try to help prevent them from coming back into the hospital. <clears throat> And we are definitely not a competing medical service. We are a team. So in addition to our small team, we are part of a team with their primary care physician and with their cardiologist. And basically we want to give them the best possible way to live with this disease and be able to help themselves have a better quality of life. So a couple facts I wanted to share with you. Uh, in the United States, about 6.5 million adults have heart failure. So that's a lot of people. Uh, I'm sure some of you watching this have it yourself or possibly know somebody. Um, heart failure was contributing cause of one in eight deaths and this information was pulled in 2017 and it's from the CDC website. And heart failure costs in the nation were estimated at $30.7 billion and that was information from 2012. So you can imagine over the years it has likely increased because that includes healthcare services, medication to treat heart failure and missed days of work. So what is our goal at the heart failure clinic? Our goal is to avoid pre preventable readmissions, decrease emergency department visits, improve quality of life and the overall experience for our patients. And we utilize evidence-based treatment protocols to actively treat and prevent symptoms and to improve patient compliance through the ongoing patient education with home medications, daily weights, exercise regime, and dietary compliance, which I find is probably the hardest part for many. So a little bit about what heart failure is. In our book, we include what heart failure is because there is a, a misconceived notion that that means the heart's gonna stop and patients really feel anxious that, you know, they, that this is a death sentence and it is definitely not. This is a, a way that the heart is just not pumping as effectively as it once was. So there is a page that includes what heart failure is, what their ejection fraction is. And what that means is they have an echocardiogram of the heart and it tells their ejection fraction, which is EF. So that is what it is, um, the abbreviation. And it, it's a percentage range usually. Normal is 50 to 70%. So sometimes if they are below that, what that means is the heart is weaker. It is not pumping as effectively. And the ways that we can help them is through diet, exercise, um, daily weights and ensuring that they're taking their medication as prescribed because like I said evidence-based practice has shown that these things can help improve the pump of the heart and in fact not help not have it be um, become weaker. <clears throat> so some symptoms might include shortness of breath, swelling, feet, hands, ankles, sometimes around the abdominal area, cough, um, sometimes shortness of breath follows all of those things and weight gain is a big indicator um, of heart failure and that doesn't mean like food weight where you know eating a bunch of things and gaining weight as a result this is typically um, weight gain and water weight um, so sometimes the picture of it is you know overall um, swelling and not feeling well feeling tired fatigue 
Um, there are different types of heart failure. There is systolic and there is diastolic. And what defines the systolic is that EF that I talked about is less than 40%. So those patients have that guideline directed therapy um, and that I talked about with the medications, um, but, any, but both types of heart failure, the other is diastolic. Um, both types can benefit from a low sodium diet from activity as tolerated um, and you know making sure that they're balancing um, rest and activity and with the diastolic it is important to control symptoms which are those um, swelling and increased shortness of breath um, a lot of times trying to control the blood pressure so that the heart doesn't have to pump as hard um, so both of these can be helped through our education. We specifically see the systolic patients in the clinic, but I see both in the hospital side. So I really wanted to talk to you about low sodium diet. Um, this is a difficult thing for many people to do because there's sodium in every single thing that we eat. So pretty much. Um, <laughs> If you eat a baked potato completely plain, it has zero sodium, depending on what kind you get. Um, so we like to keep people at 2000 milligrams of sodium per day, which seems like a lot, but I like to share the fun fact of that one teaspoon, tiny teaspoon of salt is equal to 2300 milligrams of sodium, which would exceed the total for them for a day. So it's really important that we teach our patients to really read labels and we want them to, to put away the salt shaker. We want them to make sure that they are doing everything that they can to allow themselves to have a better quality of life. And the reason that the low sodium is important is because it's really hard for the heart to pump that out because it is weaker. So um, we give them other options that can help add flavor without adding salt. Now, this is really difficult because some people have been living this way for a really long time. So I like to help them find other ways that they can um, enjoy their food without adding that salt and without putting themselves at risk to end up back in the hospital. So there's many ways such as allspice. There's different types of um, Mrs. Dash that have different flavors and they add flavor without adding sodium. Um, there are, you can use black pepper, chili pepper, um, anything that has powder like onion powder or, or cocoa powder or things like that. Just not the things that end in salt because obviously that has higher contents of sodium. I also like to share that there are some things that really hide that sodium in there that um, can really, you know, make a big, huge difference. So Alfredo sauce, barbecue sauces, cocktail sauces, um, dill pickles, um, soy sauce, huge. So a big part of that is too, it's not that they can't ever enjoy that again, but that's not something they want to eat on a daily basis. And they really need to pay attention to the amount. So if it is one teaspoon as a serving and it has 400 milligrams of sodium, then you really want to stick to that or even cut that serving in half. Um, another big thing I like to share with people is soup. So canned soup has a lot of sodium because it helps keep the shelf life. And many canned soups, if you look at the back, it tells you say 150 um, calories per serving and 550 milligrams of sodium per serving. However, those cans of soup are often want either two servings or two and a half servings. So that would mean only eating half that can to, to maintain those, the calories and the sodium content. So you double that and it's over a thousand milligrams of sodium. So we really have to be careful with the canned or the processed foods. Um, even some of the vegetables that have added like they're called savory or if they have cheese sauce. Um, those do add extra sodium because it adds flavor. So we want to make sure that we're reading labels, that we're picking things that are fresh as if we can. Um, sometimes people need the frozen because it, it, you know, they live alone and they're not eating up that fresh things as frequently. Um, we want to make it cost effective as well. So I like to share that, you know, sodium, is in everything and to make sure that we're reading the labels. Um, often we talk about sugar, but we don't always talk about sodium and lower sodium can help um, with a heart healthy diet. 
So I just wanted to kind of go through um, understanding heart failure. Um, after we go through the education, I like to hit key points for these patients. Um, it's important for them to weigh themselves daily because a three pound weight gain in one day or five pounds in a week can indicate that they're getting in trouble and early recognition is key to helping keep them out of the hospital. So if they follow our clinic, we have them call and we can sometimes adjust things or see them in the office. Um, if we are not, then they can call their primary care provider or their cardiologist so that they are able to um, have a, a point of contact that can help them to manage this and hopefully help keep them out of the hospital or even the emergency department. Um, now, sometimes they might have to go, but these daily weights are key and we do have a log within the education book to help them so that they can log each and every day and they can make sure that they're keeping track and helping themselves. Um, it's important that they take their medication as prescribed and take it every day, not skip doses. Um, make sure that they're sharing if they have any side effects or um, concerns that they have so that we can help work through that so to make sure that they are taking these medications. Because for either type of heart failure, it's important that they take the medication as prescribed. As far as systolic, it is guideline-directed therapy that has been proven to help results. And with a diastolic, it helps control symptoms, which then in fact helps um, the heart failure and helps the symptoms. Uh, we want them to follow their diet, um, which is that low sodium diet to the best of their ability and read labels. We want them to know when to get help. So part of knowing when to get help is knowing their zones, which I will talk to you about as well. Um, because, or like I said earlier, early recognition is key. So we have a green, yellow, and red zone and I really try to focus on the yellow part of that because many people wait till they have several symptoms before they seek any type of medical attention. And what's key is knowing their body and recognizing those symptoms as soon as possible so that they have a better chance of staying out of the hospital and they are able to then um, recognize early so that we can help um, adjust things to, to make their symptoms. Um, relieved or better or you know help them through that and then keeping follow-up app appointments are super important um, follow-up appointments um, help with assessment of the patient so that that way they're we're able to um, see what where their needs are where are they struggling where what are they doing really well at so that we can help cheer them on when they are doing well and we can help guide them if they're not um, and if they need a little bit of extra help so it is super important that, you know, we, main, we, ba we build that relationship and, and we help them because living with any chronic disease is not easy and we want to make it as seamless as possible. <clears throat> so one final thing I wanted to talk to you about is again, those heart failure zones. So we provide them with a magnet that they can hang on the refrigerator that includes things that they can do every day and then it has green, yellow, and red zones. So we really want to keep them out of the red zone, which is, you know, severe chest pain, confusion, and really struggling to breathe. If they're having symptoms of a little bit of shortness of breath or that weight gain or swelling or um, having a dry, hacky cough or any of that, we want them to call. We want them to reach out to, their, to whatever provider is appropriate so that we can help them um, manage this in as, as quickly and as early as possible. Um, so I am so happy that I was able to talk with you about heart failure and I hope that you gained some knowledge from this today. And if you or yourself um, know anybody that has heart failure, uh, we would be happy to help you at the clinic. Um, we usually take referrals from an outpatient from a primary care provider. So um, if that's something that you think that you would benefit from, we'll be happy to see you. Have a great day.